Hey, this is Matt once again. What about you in the video? And this is a paid request for Omega Bear. Thank you so much for that. Sorry for the lateness of the video. Trying to get to these as soon as I can. But if anyone does want to send a paid request, PayPal is usually the best bet. Do have a Patreon and Cash App for those interested in using those instead. Just be with asked. Links are down below in the info box. It could be any type of review, topic, reaction, re review, playthrough a video game, tier list, ranking, whatever the case may be, I'll get to as soon as I can. And for those who send, thank you, I really do appreciate it. And this is for the assassination of Richard Nixon from 2004, which is a film I never heard of before. So I guess when this came out, it didn't do much of anything, I, I guess. It stars Sean Penn. You also have Naomi Watts, who was in the Ring remake, Don Cheadle, Michael T. Williamson, Michael Wincott, and pretty much it says it's based on a true story, but I don't know how much of that is BS or not. And it's about a guy played by Sean Penn who is just really losing his mind. It kind of came off as like a much lesser version of Taxi Driver. Because you have a guy who's losing his mind, who has this moral quandary in his head, and how he needs to do something, which in this case involve, both involve thinking of assassinating someone. So it doesn't have as much of the memorable grit, visceralness, impact of a taxi driver type of movie. But, I thought it was okay. I thought the cast worked well for the story. It is more of a character piece. I think Roger Ebert actually said this because he liked it. It's more of a character piece if a guy just loses his mind, which is true. Where... I mean, from the very beginning, Sean Penn's character is saying about how every person, every humanity is a piece of sand, a grain of sand, and how even the least grain of sand has the power to destroy them, and that's kind of the mark he wants to showcase. And it's one of those films that shows a little bit, then it goes back, I don't know how long, like two weeks or so? I forget. But... Sean Penn is a salesman. His buddies played by Don, Ch Don Cheeto. Sadly, Don Cheeto's not in this film a lot, which is too bad, because I liked his character. He seemed very filled with personality, and yeah, he's friends with Sean Penn. He's like good-natured and happy, and he has the right attitude. Later on, when someone screws him over and treats him bad, because he works at fixing cars... A customer goes in on him saying, I thought you were supposed to fix my leak. How come you didn't fix the other leaks? Okay, I got more. And Sean Penn, this is much later in the film, has a gun, ready to shoot him. And Don's like, what are you doing? He should talk to you like that. So what? I don't care about that guy. You know what I took off of him? I took his money. That's what I took. That's all I took off of him was his money. Like, he has the right way of putting it. He has the right attitude. Good head on his shoulders. I said, like, I wish we saw more of him. I kind of maybe this dichotomy between Don Cheeto and Sean Penn, and kind of maybe Don Cheeto noticing something about Sean Penn. And okay, it's his friend, but he realizes his friend's, friend's cracking up. And maybe this kind of dichotomy back and forth where he's my friend, and can I help him? Do I try to help him? Am I thinking, no, there's no way he could be doing this. Could he be doing this? No, there's no way he could be doing this. So I wish there was a bit more to the story on that front. It was based on a true story? Yeah, but most true stories are BS, or they put a lot of BS into it, so. But I just would, I think that part maybe would have enriched the story a bit more for me. But pretty much this, I don't want to say slow build, because, you know, it wasn't a bad watch. 
I thought Sean Penn did a good job. I do think he's a pretty decent actor. I do. I think he's a good actor. He was good in Dead Man Walking. And very different and good in Fast Times of Rich, <laughs> Ridgemont High. He did an action film called The Gunman, which I thought was okay. Because I liked his performance in it. It was interesting to see him do that kind of action movie. There's other stuff that could have been done better. But yeah, that's a film I didn't mind. The Gunman. I thought it was okay. So I don't mind Sean Penn as an actor. Casualties of War is fantastic in. So I, I think he does a good job here. He loves uh, Leonard Bernstein music. And appreciates him. He's estranged from his wife. Played by Naomi Watts. You could tell he wants to be with her again. But she doesn't want anything to do with him. And he can't get the hint. <clears throat> he's worked as a salesman he doesn't like his boss his boss condescends to him his boss gives him this tape to try to be a better salesman he does things and acts in ways that Sean Penn doesn't like And he thinks the system is out against him. The system is not right. He's not respected. He, he gives pontificates about how slavery has never went away. It's just called employee. He had worked for his brother, Michael Wincott, who sadly, he's only in like one scene in the film. Which would have been cool to see more of Michael Wincott, because he's a good actor. I don't know as a person. I've heard some bad things about him as a person, but he is a good actor. He plays Sean Penn's brother. Sadly, he's only in, again, one scene in the film. But he quit his brother's job at this tire place because, as he puts it, no one should have to lie to make a living. He tries to get a loan for this new business that he's going to have with Don Cheeto and about how we're always going to be honest to the customer. We're always going to be honest on this and that. I'm not going to let my employee feel like a failure or a piece of garbage. It's all about honesty. Pretty much trying to pigeonhole his life into this thing that will never work because that's not how reality works. And the few sees Don Cheeto's in, he tries to tell him when... Sean Pence pissed about his job and thinking of quitting. And, you know, my rights. And Don Cheeto stops and writes my ass. You have a right to be mad. You have that right. But it's a job. You have to deal with it. If your boss gives you crap, sometimes, Sally, you have to deal with it. I think you have the right to be mad. But guess what? Any job thinks that could be fair or always fair. But you know, Sean Penn doesn't want to listen. And, spoiler alert, it just, things go downhill. He gets divorced. The, the letter comes in for the divorce. The letter comes in for the loan. It's denied. He's had enough with his boss, so he quits the job. He keeps watching TV about Richard Nixon. I mean, earlier on, the... The boss he doesn't like tells him about how Richard Nixon is one of the more successful salesmen because the first time he won, he said he would end Vietnam. That didn't happen. So he won the second term saying the same thing. He was going to uh, stop Vietnam. Not win, stop. End Vietnam. That didn't happen. Then he got a second term and then the Watergate happened. But anyway... He starts yelling at the TV, it's all about money, dick. As in, you know, <laughs> Richard Nixon. That dick. I kind of wish there was a bit more of him, maybe a bit more of him talk, maybe like he's talking to Richard Nixon a bit more of that. 
like a bit more of, of the up like we see him watching TV which Nixon on and then the stuff going on in life but I wish like throughout the film that maybe he would go on more rants about Nixon like whether to Don Cheadle uh, like he would talk more about Nixon and how Nixon's ruined this country how Nixon turned this country into this and how Nixon did this like if he throughout the film would mention Nixon more and more and more and his outrage and his angst and yelling at people, yelling amongst people about how horrible this guy is, then that would lead him into, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to assassinate Richard Nixon. Because it's his fault. Maybe some people would think that'd be on the nose, but I think that would make the transition to him finally choosing to do this. It's not that it comes out of left field, because he does watch, and once in a while he comments, but I wish there was a bit more of that. But really, it's just more about this guy falling apart, where he's not a great salesman, he doesn't want to lie to, to the customer, let's say he quits his job, he gets divorced, he can't take a hint, he breaks to his brother's place to order this stuff to get the parts to have this business with Don Cheeto, but then Michael Wincott comes by and goes, I know it was you. I had to bail your buddy Don Cheeto and calm things down so your buddy didn't go to jail because of what you did and you put all this stuff with my money so you're stealing from me. And then pretty much say, I wash my hands of you. You never see Don Cheeto again, which is too bad. No, you never see him again. Which I'm surprised that there wasn't a moment where he tries to talk Don Cheeto and Don Cheeto tells him to piss off or leave me alone or don't talk to me ever again, that kind of th thing. I mean, obviously you assume Michael Wincott told Don Cheeto everything, so Don Cheeto wants nothing to do with him, but I'm surprised there wasn't even a phone call, like nothing. Like, you just never see Don Cheeto again, which I thought, I don't know, he seemed like a pretty important character to have at least one more scene. <clears throat> so pretty much, in spoilers... Sean Penn gets the idea because he sees on the news that someone maybe had a thought of crashing a plane at the White House. He gets an idea to do that. Take over a plane and have it crash the White House. Again, that's why I wish there was a bit more scenes of him focusing more of his obsession on Nixon. Well, I think this is the section where all he could do, like, we see him watching TV, but have him, like, talk to the TV, or, I don't know, I just wanted a bit more of that. Maybe that's just me being greedy about it. Maybe it would have been too ham-fisted to do that. But, he goes into his place, his, his old place, where his family's at, the only one home at that point is the dog. He sleeps in the bed, or lies in the bed for a bit. Then he goes and shoots the dog. And I have no idea why. It's like this desperate attempt to show the audience, yep, he's far gone. Yep, he's capable of killing because he shot the dog. Now, if the dog had done something minuscule that he didn't like... Like, I don't know, lit them that he didn't want to, or stain something, and it was just, you know, not his fault. Something, and then he's tired of being disrespected, shoot the dog. I have no idea why he shot the dog. Why did he kill the dog? I guess it's just to show he's bad. He's crazy. How is he crazy? He shot the dog. Why? I don't know. Because he's crazy. Because if it made sense, then he wouldn't be crazy. I, I just thought that was kind of, it just came out of left field. 
and say, how do we show the audience he's crazy? Well, I mean, you already know he's crazy with the way his behavior is, but, and what he plans to do. But oh, we gotta show he's got murderous intentions. Okay, he killed the dog. Who was a nice dog. Okay. I get it. Are crazy people do something crazy? Wow. I, I know, I know, I know. But it just, it just came out of left field to me. It didn't feel earned. So then it cuts to what well, we saw a little bit at the beginning. He's at the airport. Baltimore, Washington airport, I believe. He gets freaked out. I think he's got like gasoline in his suit, his suitcase and a, a gun. He shoots wounds a few people, gets on the plane, shoots the pilot, has a girl hostage. The girl scared and frightened. Some people are on the other side of the airplane door shooting at him. He lets the, the lady go. He gets shot. Crawls to the bathroom. Says something about... He had mailed something to that musician, Leonard Bernstein. Please tell him why I did what I did. Shoots himself. And I guess the, the point of the ending is you hear the news and... The news says they don't know what the motive was. They don't know why this happened. And you see no reaction from anybody from the rest of the film. No reaction from his boss. No reaction from Michael Wincott. No reaction from Don Cheeto. No reaction from Naomi Watts. Doesn't show them at all. Which I guess is supposed to be the point of he's been so forgotten even his former friends and family won't... We don't even see them react to it. Because... The least grain of sand... Has the power to destroy them. At least in this sense, it got knocked off his pedestal on that... <laughs> momentum. For Sean Penn's character. So yeah, I guess that's the thing is that that's the supposed to be the saddest part of it is he did all this. Sally, you know, people were killed, and for what? Something that no one's going to remember, or no one's going to know the motive. Nothing's going to change, and even his friends or family don't even notice. I guess that's the assumption we have is that they don't notice. I mean, take that for what you will. I'm kind of 50 50 on it. I get the idea. It's somewhat interesting, but as a narrative, I personally would have preferred the reactions and maybe be different reactions. Maybe, you know, the boss would be indifference, or I knew it. Or, I think Don Cheeto would probably be saddened. Maybe Michael, I don't, I don't know. I mean, Naomi Watts is okay. She doesn't have a whole lot to do other than being kind of uneasy, freaked out by Sean Penn. Don Cheeto has a couple, you know, he's in a couple scenes. The few scenes he's in, I like. He's got the, some nice energy, personality to him. Michael Wincott, sadly, again, is only in one scene. Michael T. Williamson, who was in, you know, Bubba Gum and Forrest Gump, he's there in one scene as part of the Black Panthers. Because Sean Penn went up and says, I know what you guys are going through about how it feels to not be respected. You know, there's a lot of white guys that feel the same way too. That's why I think you should change your names to the zebras. Because you know, zebras have white and black on it. And if you have white people too, your your group will double. And like, Michael T. Williamson humors him. And then you never see him again, so... You're almost like, well, what was the point of that scene? Because 
you never see those characters again that's never mentioned again then there comes into play later on at the end i guess it's just again the show sean penn's frame of mind of just how he feels disrespect and how he feels insignificant it's a guy who feels insignificant and sally by way of doing so self-destruction and becomes insignificant because he pushes his brother away by doing stealing stuff sort of push his friend away by getting him in trouble with the cops pushes his wife away freaked her out where they could have at least been friends but no god send the divorce victim comp however you want to associate his responses so I it was interesting to watch for the performances it's a very scant story this is a story you've seen before a guy losing his mind and hating the, the system thinking the system is corrupt or putting down the little man Of course, you know, even reading the plots and I was on the okay, it's never it's not gonna be as good as taxi driver. But just I guess I just wish there was a bit more beat on the bones of an as a narrative. Like I said having Don Cheeto incorporated more into the story or maybe a few more scenes Michael Wind you know, stuff like that. But uh you know, that wasn't the case. Overall it was okay. It was okay. Like I said, if you're, if you like those character studies, character pieces, I mean, you don't learn anything about his childhood, again, the backstory of him, what I told you is what you know about him. Like I said, it's, it's okay, but I can see why this is a film I'd never heard of before. But you could do a lot worse too. It's okay. Because of the performances. More so Sean Penn. Yeah. But. Also I mean. Do you have a little. Nip. Not. What would be. A, what, you know how a nitpick is like a tiny negative thing. What's a word for like a tiny positive thing? So like the opposite of a nitpick. A little positive is when he shoots the pilot, it looked like a blood squib, like done practically. That was a bit surprising. I'm curious, what has this director done? Uh, this director. Niels Mueller, who wrote it as well. He was an edit. He uh, he wrote a film called Tadpole. Wait, co well, he's a co-producer of The Flock, which I actually don't mind. That was with Claire Danes. That's uh, Richard Deere and Claire Danes trying to deal with uh, sex offenders. I should remember that being in a bad movie. I remember that being okay, but he, he co-produced it. He directed a film called Small Town, Wisconsin. Don't know what that is. So in other words, they didn't go on to do much of anything. Does this film came out... I guess in theaters? Did it really go into theaters? How the hell did this go into theaters? It was in 59 theaters in its widest release. So it started off in five theaters, then went to 32, 26, 26, 59. 44, 20, 38. <laughs> so, to get 700, 
thousand dollars. Three point seven million international for four point four million worldwide on a four point six billion dollar budget. So it definitely did not do jab squat. Ron Tomatoes. It struggles to convey deeper meaning, but a fascinating true story and compelling Sean Penn performance are worthy compensations. Hmm. I'm just curious. What does it have a name to be? 6.9. So yeah, it has a couple of, uh, you know, Roger Eber liked the film. I think Premiere Magazine liked the film. So it has a couple of its fans. Sean Penn was attached to this project for six years before the financing for the picture was secured. So there was a real Sam Bick, which is the character he played. So, a TV special, The Plot to Kill Nixon, 2005, broadcast premiere stateside late January 2005, the following year after this cinema movie had premiered in the USA. Hmm. That documentary may be more interesting than this. I don't know. They said this was okay, to be fair, so that's not fair to say. Loosely based on the life and death of Samuel Bick, who on February 1974 attempted to hijack a Delta airline at Baltimore, Washington International Airport in order to crash into the wilds and kill President Richard Nixon. So. so they based it on that. The man was shot by police and then killed himself in the aircraft while he was still on the ground at the airport. So, that's definitely the stuff they, they took from it. So, that stuff is relayed into this film. I'm sure a lot of the details of life, they probably messed around with it. So, yeah. So, I just looked up some info on it. Just do a little bit more research. With that said, thanks for watching. Thanks once again to Old Major Bear, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye bye for now.